This lesson serves as the last lesson in a short series of unplugged activities focusing on the big ideas of algorithms and the internet. This lesson connects back to the internet by showing how routers on the internet learn about the best ways to route traffic. In previous lessons where students considered shortest path algorithms, they could see the entire graph and consider it when tracing through the shortest path algorithm. But the internet is huge. It's impossible for one router, a computer, to actually keep track of every possible path to every possible location. Also, the internet changes over time. Computers and routers join up, wires get accidentally severed, and routers get hacked or attacked. Routers are supposed to route traffic as efficiently as possible, but they can't possibly keep track of such a large, fluctuating network. So the big question of the lesson is, how do routers actually learn what the best ways to route traffic are? How can they recover if a known path goes down? This lesson gives students acting as individual routers an interesting view into an algorithm for calculating and updating the best paths through the internet. Not all routers on the internet are directly connected to each other. The way routers keep track of paths through the internet is actually not by keeping track of the whole path at all. Rather, routers keep track of the cost of routing traffic through other neighboring routers to which it's connected. But what is meant by cost? Cost can mean a lot of things when talking about the internet. Time, speed, reliability, money. Usually it means time. And it's a measure of the bitrate between routers and the total cumulative time it takes for a packet hopping from one router to another to get from one place to its destination. Time can be affected by the connection speed and also by the volume of traffic on the internet. When a router joins a network, it might initially know the costs of the connections to the routers to which it is directly connected. That router can then exchange information about the costs of its connections with other routers that are directly connected to it. During this exchange, a router might realize that if it routes packets through that neighbor, those packets can reach yet other routers that they couldn't before. The total cost of routing traffic through the neighbor is the cost of the direct connection plus the cost reported by the neighbor to get to the destination. Over time, the cost of connections might change or newer, better paths might be realized, and routers constantly update their internal tables to reflect the most recent and best information. Each router keeps track of multiple paths to various points by keeping track of the cost of routing traffic through its directly connected neighbors. The algorithm that each router runs is relatively simple, but since every router is doing it, the algorithm is effectively distributed, and it seems like all the routers on the internet are constantly learning. In the activity, students each act as the router, exchanging information with other routers on the internet, which we represent as a small network of eight routers. Today, you are each going to be routers and learn about how routers learn about the shortest path to other routers on the internet. Each student is connected to three other classmates with whom they can exchange information, and initially only knows about the cost to these directly connected neighbors. Students, as routers, exchange information about routing costs with their neighbors and record this information in their own personal routing table. Over time, each student's or router's table will grow and show the cost of routing traffic through each of their neighbors to every other possible router in the small network. To make this run smoothly with your students, we have a few tips. Put eight students in a circle. A round table is just fine, and hand out the worksheets in alphabetical order, A through H, around the circle. With this uh, sticky note on it, just put it somewhere visible. You can put it on your head, you can put it on your shirt, but make sure that everybody else at the table can see what your router is, and I'm passing these out in order. If your class size isn't divisible by eight, then create groups so that each one has as many students as possible. So two groups of seven are preferable to one of eight and another of six. Distribute the worksheets alphabetically around the circle and place any remaining worksheets in the circle as if they were students or routers in their place. These ones are considered dumb routers. G, okay, and this dumb router here is H. Students can consult the sheet, but the dumb router's table will never change. So hand these out. These are the instructions. What I want you to do is take just a couple minutes and read the instructions on the handout. Have students note that they are connected to the person on either side of them and then someone across the table, and that these are the only three people they should talk to.
Each of you are only connected to three other routers at this table. You are connected to your elbow partners, and you are connected to one person across the way. So can you guys point? It's important during the lesson that students only talk to and exchange information with the students they're connected to. What we're going to be doing is trying to find the cheapest cost. So what these numbers on the wires are is the cost to get from, from one node to another. It's helpful to walk through the examples on the worksheet with your students that demonstrate how to calculate the cost of a path based on an information exchange. I asked B, hey, can you get to D? And B said, yep, with a cost of eight, which means that through B, I can get to D in a cost of 10 because it takes two and then eight. But I already have a direct connection to D of four. So I note that down that I can get to D through B with a cost of 10 total. So I now have two known paths to D. So we're going to spend two minutes, pick one router that you are connected to and exchange information with it. You'll be filling out the column of that router that you are speaking with at that time. You might want to start the information exchange in timed rounds, being clear that each round they should talk to one of their directly connected neighbors. A pair of students will need two to three minutes to trade information, but it will get much faster with each subsequent round. Make sure that during each round, every student is exchanging information with a neighbor, even if it's a dumb router. No student should be sitting or doing nothing for any given round. Yeah. Do you have a connection to D? Yes. How much it's, is that? It's five. Five. What's your best connection to G? My best connection to G is direct and it's eight. So now that you've gotten the hang of it and talked to one partner, I'm now going to open it up. You can talk to any of your three partners. Still only your three partners, but you can go back and forth and exchange information with any of them. You may want to go back to a previous partner because they may have found some new information. In this activity, even if students don't calculate the cost completely correctly, it's OK. The main ideas of the activity will still come through. Students will still see that each router can learn about the network by talking to only a few other routers and that there are multiple paths with different costs to every destination. After a few rounds of exchanging information, groups look at the big picture by drawing what they know about the network on a poster. So you can ask groups to try to trace a route between some starting and ending points by asking each subsequent router along the way to say which neighbor they would forward a packet to to reach the destination. If I know that my lowest cost route is through F to get to C, do I have to go E to F to C? Start or out can I by just directly to C. Uh, you only have wires connecting you to these two, so we should write start out by just drawing the ones that you're connected okay. to. When our direct connection between us is eight, but we got a much smaller number, yeah. so can we see how that worked? Because I was able to, from from F, I was able to go get a short a smaller number from E, because that was a connection. Right, so my connection to G is from E to H, which is one, and then from Sense. H to G, which is two. So if you go to me for one, that's a total of four. Unlike the previous shortest path algorithm activities, it is impossible to trace a definitive shortest path on the graph because each router is its own starting point and views the network differently. It is also important to discuss why a router keeps track of more than one path to a destination rather than just the shortest one. Prompt your students with a question such as, what if the link between A and B goes down or gets eaten by a raccoon? How would that affect traffic in the network?